would turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 1. Uh, I hope this will encourage. Uh, we don't, uh, uh, we all know the story of Zechariah and, and Elizabeth and all those. And this is what we want to try to study on this morning, read to you about, and uh, some of the things that uh, they encountered and their offspring. Uh, John the Baptist, and uh, and how that he and Jesus were related, or uh, close, I, I'm assuming they were related, but anyway, uh, in the uh, book of St. Luke, uh, verse, chapter 1, verse 5, we want to start our reading there, and uh, I'd like to say this morning that it's, uh, it's a great privilege for me to be able to stand before you and to read God's Word. And uh, I, I look forward to it, and uh, I dread it. So uh, I don't know if that's, uh, if it affects anybody else like that or not. Right. But I, I do want to, when I, when I, when I teach a lesson, if I read the Word, I want to, I want to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I want, I want what I say to be right. And any time that I ever say anything wrong, I, plead, I pray that you would, uh, correct me on it, and uh, uh, because I don't in, do it intentionally, but uh, I want to be a blessing. So this morning in in Luke's Gospel, verse five, there was a, in the days of of Herod the king of Judah a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abia, and I looked this uh, up, and I, I'm I'm assuming that it was a a tribe because I noticed there were some other names there, but uh, uh, I think this is what he's talking about. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. And her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord blameless. Now this morning, uh, as we look at this, you, 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 you know, people that have this kind of a, uh, uh, that you can say about them, they were they were straight, and they kept the law. And they were under the law, and they kept the law. and And this is why Zechariah was in the temple, because he was appointed. There it says that in verse uh, one, I mean verse five. There is Zechariah of the course, and of course he the, he had a he had a job to do also there in the temple, and uh, I believe his was to I'll, I'll see it in a minute here. But it, I remember him saying, it's, it's telling about his job, and I will get to it in a minute, but he had a certain job that he had to do there, and he, he stayed there in that, in that for so, so many uh, hours or so many uh, a day or whatever. But notice here uh, the thing that, that was so wonderful about this, and, and, and he was so steadfast to the Lord and all, and they had no children or no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were not well. Now were now well stricken in years, and and uh, Elizabeth had to bear the the burden and the scorning of not being able to get pregnant and raise have a child. And that was one of the things back in that day. It was it was a it was a disgrace, or it was. It right. was for shameful for a woman if she couldn't get pregnant and have children, because that's one of the things that they believed in is, is re, replenishing. But anyway, she was in, she was she was uh, she was this way in in, in 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 verse seven, and they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they both are now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. A custom, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Now notice what uh, these people, how close they were together, how they backed one another, and, and it makes uh, me sometimes uh, wish that we could get closer to one right. another and that we could, we could uh, uh, praise one another more, that we could, we could uh, help one another. But notice here, According, uh, and in verse 10, after he went in, he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without 
at the time of the incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, now Zechariah actually saw the angel. Amen. He was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Now, him being uh, blameless, in other words, he he had this experience of seeing this angel, and he by this you know that he was close to him. And he was troubled, though, because in verse 13 it says, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Amen. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, Amen. and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Now this is this is a rare a rare thing because I, I don't find it anywhere else but uh, uh, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answered, said unto him, I am Gabriel, I, that I stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. So Gabriel, Gabriel was summoned to talk to Zechariah, and he was given the authority to tell him what he told from God because he stood in the presence of God. Amen. Now listen, this morning, people, we we may we may be in the presence of Gabriel and not know it this morning. Right. We may be in the presence of, I believe we're in the presence of angels this Amen. morning. I believe that when we have services here, that there's angels that, that sits on the pews or stands in the corners or, or, or whatever they do. But I believe that they are Amen. here, and I believe that the Holy Spirit is here, and I believe that He speaks to our souls, and He comforts us, and these angels that hear these things can go back and tell Jesus about these things and how His people are doing, and God knows these things, and I believe this is the, the, the thing that the angels, one of the things that the angels get to do. And you know, I've often wondered about when we get to heaven, what our job's going to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have no, no, no idea. But the thing of it is, I know what the angel's job is. Right. And that is, they're in the presence of God. And Gabriel said he was. And notice where he stood on, at the altar. He stood on the right side of the altar. He, like Jesus, when he ascended back to heaven, he stood on the right hand of the Father. Or sat on the right hand of the Father. And so here's, this is Gabriel, but notice I want to read something else to you. And Zechariah said unto him, unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am a man, am old, and my wife well stricken in, in years. Now, in, in the, who, do you, who do you remember said that to? Abraham. Right. Abraham over in, in, the, in the Genesis, about the 17th chapter there, he said the same thing. Right. And uh, even his wife, when she heard it, she laughed. Right. And so here uh, we see that that God asked her why she laughed, and she she denied it. And here, when 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 uh, he asked Gabriel this question about this, and 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 questioned him about it, this is what happened to him. In verse twenty, and behold, because he says. I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my word, which shall be fulfilled in their seasons. Amen. Now, Zechariah stayed speechless for about nine and a half months mm -hmm. because here he was 
and it affected him when he went out and he couldn't speak. So we'll see here that he went home and he was with his wife and she got pregnant and all of that time he couldn't talk. Nine, nine, nine to ten months that he was speechless. And the only thing that he could do was write little notes. And we'll see that in a minute. But now he said here, you're going to be dumb. And the people, in verse 21, and the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he carried so long in the temple. So he had a, he had a great conversation with this Gabriel. He was doing his work and it took him longer than usual. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the day of his ministration was accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the day wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach from men. Amen. And this was what I was talking about here. She's, she's praising the Lord because she's pregnant. Because so many of the men had made fun of her, had, had uh, uh, just, just made fun of her and, and, and accused her and and, uh, and all this, and he and, and she says here, uh, the Lord has dealt with me in the day, for in he lo looked on me to take away my reproach. So that uh, as soon as the the neighbors seen that she was per she was uh, uh, pregnant, and of course this was probably I think he said she hid herself for five months. But when they knew it, then they had nothing else to say. They had no more reproach to her. So here. In the in the in verse 26 and in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of, of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and I know this is all reading but listen it's something that we need to understand Amen. and, and I, I want to go through this and the angel in verse 28 and the angel came in unto her and said hail thou that are highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women Amen. now these this woman this woman here is taken out of the out of the scripture by certain religions and she is put on a pedestal and she is worshipped. Mary never, never would, uh, and, and, and the Lord God of heaven never would have this be, to be done because that's not the purpose of what, Amen. what it's Mary's life was about. Because Mary was for the, for the caring of, this, of the Son, Jesus Christ. Right. And that's what her, that was her purpose. Is to to carry this child and to have this child. Notice here it says, and the angel came into her and well, I didn't read it. And when she in, in verse twenty nine, and when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Amen. And listen, that's. In comparison to Elizabeth, for that they found favor, and for that they she had went all these years and never conceived, now she's blessed with a child, and here is Mary uh, that's going to be blessed with this child, and John and Jesus is going to come together. Amen. And this is going to be this is this is the the uh, the reason I want to do this. Uh, and in verse thirty one. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, Amen. and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of, of da, uh, the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And and now notice, and of his kingdom. 
there shall be no end. Amen. Now listen, this kingdom, this kingdom, and, and we'll see later on in Matthew's gospel, this kingdom is the kingdom that will be set up here on earth. This is the kingdom. This is the this will be the kingdom for that the, the the earth will be destroyed and it be just like a, a burnt off with a like a plant bed or something. It will be destroyed. It will be burnt off. And listen, the holy city of New Jerusalem will come down on, in this kingdom right here. And this is the kingdom that we, as God's people, that are saved, we will we will reign on. Amen. And so notice it, this is. This is what this is one of the, the highlights of this, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And we can look in, in Daniel. Daniel prophesies the same thing. Notice now. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Now, you notice Gabriel did not criticize Mary like he did Zacharias. She did not question him to the point of doubting. But she wanted to know how it was going to take place. And so we see here that Mary... Mary was not wrong in asking how this would be. Whereas Zechariah, he was, uh, his speech was gone for nine or ten months because he asked why. And over in, uh, in, uh, with Abraham and Sarah, uh, Jesus asked Sarah why she laughed and, and, uh, and, and Abraham uh, what he said. But here, Mary was, was, was innocent of this. And so, uh, and in verse 36 now, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Amen. So now you can pretty well tell that John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. Right. But this. And for in verse 37 now. For with, with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto thee, unto me according to thy word. She was in she was in agreement with him. She she said, Hey, whatever. Be it, uh, be it according, verse 38, unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her, and Mary rose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. Amen. Now, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, John the Baptist was born of the Holy Ghost. Now notice here, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? So with this meeting, there were some things that was understood between them and that neither one of them had mentioned either one of them. Right. But listen, she, Elizabeth recognized that she was carrying the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And and uh, John the Baptist that was in Elizabeth, he recognized it also. Amen. Because we'll read it just in a minute here. For in verse 44, For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ear, the babe leaped in my womb for joy and blessed is she that believeth for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord and Mary said my soul doth magnify the Lord Amen. and so they both knew what was what was going on because uh, Elizabeth knew that she 
she had something that was going to be precious, like Mary had something that was going to be greater than John the Baptist. And she said here, uh, and, uh, and when's the company? Uh, in verse 42, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, talking to Mary, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Amen. Whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? She knew she knew that she was carrying Jesus Christ. Right. And they hadn't been together. And so this is the Holy Spirit working, and this is this is uh, this is a this is a miracle in itself with them understanding what was going on. Now again here when Jesus when 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 she uh, when Mary said something to Elizabeth, John the Baptist leaped. He knew the sound of Mary's voice, and he knew what was within her, and he, knew what he was in the presence of Jesus Christ. And listen, he, he, had never, he had never heard of him. He never seen him, but he knew that he was in the presence of Jesus Christ. For uh, he says in verse four, as long in verse forty four, for lo, as soon as thy voice of thy sal salutation sounded in my ear, her voice did this. The babe leaped in my womb for joy, and blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Amen. And listen, the, the Catholics eat this up. Mm -hmm. They eat this up because, listen, they say that she, the virgin mother, is the one that you can pray to. She's, they, they teach that she is, she is a saint. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, it wasn't meant for them to understand it that way. This was meant to show the, the power of God and the, and the Father. And show how that he worked these signs together to make this work and come out like it did. But it was not to magnify Mary uh, to the point of of us worshiping her. Right. Because listen, the one that was in her stomach was the one that we will worship. Amen. He is the one that will go to the cross for us. He's the one that will die for us. Mary could not do that. But Jesus Christ did that for us, and that's the reason why this morning that they that worship Mary as a saint or that they pray to to go to the Father, they're wrong, and listen, they're led astray by a false teaching. And so here we see uh, in verse 49, uh, 48, for he... For he hath regarded the lowest state of this handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. Amen. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the indignation of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of lower, of lower grade. He has filled the hungry with the good things Amen. and the rich he has sent empty. Now, notice here uh, one thing I want you to read here in verse, uh, I believe it is, uh, verse 7. I, I want to look at this and I'm going to go to Matthew just a minute. Uh, in verse 76 of this uh, Luke 1, and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. Now, this is talking about John the Baptist. Now, over in 
in uh, Matthew's Gospel. I want you to turn with me there to Matthew 3. Now, I don't believe that, that, that Jesus and John the Baptist were together that much because, you know, as soon as Jesus was a couple of years old, he, they took him away and, and, and kept him away to keep him from getting killed. And when he come back, I do, uh, we don't find anything uh, concerning Jesus and John the Baptist. But notice in three, chapter 3 of Matthew, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one talking about John the Baptist, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan, and were baptized to him, confessing their sins. But when he saw the first saw many of the Pharisees, Sadducees come to him as baptism. He said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruit for repentance. Now, in verse 13, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Amen. This here was an identification, identification of Jesus Christ to the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and all of them through John the Baptist. And John was the one that came preaching in the wilderness and proclaiming and and uh, and one of the uh, the uh, uh, places there, he saw Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away all the sins of the world. And this is here, suffer to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And the righteousness here was that baptism was not for salvation, but self baptism is for identification. Amen. Identification that because, listen, Jesus Christ did not need salvation. Amen. And he did not need to, for, for baptism, he didn't need it. But listen, he wanted all of them to know, and this was to give us, give us a way to let people know, the world know, if they, if they come to uh, see us being baptized and coming up out of the water, saying that we have died to Jesus Christ, and we're a saved creature, and we were buried with Christ, and we have risen in a new, and that's the same thing he said, to fulfill all righteousness. Amen. To people, and, and, and when you see someone baptized, you realize that there's something that changed in their life. Now, it may be a false teaching, and they may be, they may be going down a wet center and coming out of wet center, but listen, those that have been saved and they are baptized, they are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, and they've come out a new creature just as Jesus Christ arose from the grave and ascended to the Father. And so by this, we know that they are saved, they, they have proclaimed salvation, they have trusted in the Lord for their, for their salvation. And so this is what this means, and so this is what, John, this is why that, that Jesus, Jesus said, I need you to baptize me. John said, I need you to baptize me. But John knew Jesus at this time, and and, uh, and, and when he was coming, in one place there, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the Lord. He identified him there, but listen, the baptism identified him also. And so this is what, and when Jesus, in verse uh, in verse 16, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water, and all the Heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my, he's identifying me, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. And so, people, that's our, uh, that's a lot of reading. Uh, there's a lot of things here that you might, uh, 
get from this, you can look over in, in Daniel, I believe in, uh, uh, I, I forget now what chapter it is, uh, the second chapter I believe it is, 40 something, and you see more about the kingdom of God, uh, for that uh, they were talking about here with Jesus. Uh, but our time's gone, so we thank you for listening to us. We thank you so much.